Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. We're going to look at turmeric as a part of the lung congestion series. What is turmeric? Turmeric has been a widely used food and medicinal plant for over 4,000 years in the Indian culture, and it's traditionally used for disorders of the skin, upper respiratory tract, joints, and digestive system, generally recognized as safe, and that's what the, even the FDA has ruled, and it's derived from the root of curcuma longa plant, and it's a rhizome. Hanging off the roots are these things called rhizomes, and it also comes from the ginger family. If you look at the lung, you will notice that the lung has two different states, right? When the lung is clean and it's got normal airways, the muscles are not thickened and the airway walls are thin. When you have lung congestion, there's mucus filled in there, the airways are widened and the wall is thickened as well as it's scarred. So two very different states. And how does this happen? You have an excess amount of blood going to specific parts of the lung when you get congestion. The mucous membranes become very inflamed. So inflammation is a big part of lung congestion and you start producing excessive mucus which blocks the different airways you end up with having difficulty breathing or the excessive mucus becomes an ideal breeding ground for bacteria leading to secondary infections with cytosol we're able to look at all that research that's done on turmeric and on lung congestion and then we look at the mechanisms of action relative to the compounds in turmeric now all of this is made possible because we have a very powerful technology called cytosol cytosol helps eliminate animal testing there's a lot of research going on let's say on turmeric all over the world in small institutions. And if we can look at all the research and aggregate it and connect the dots versus just relying on one group at Harvard or MIT or Yale. So now that you understand sort of at a very high level what occurs, I want you to really recognize that turmeric is a pretty well researched herb and we integrate at the Cytosolve Open Science Institute all of the research that's out there. Over the last 145 years, 5,918 research articles written on turmeric. So there's been quite a bit of research done on turmeric. All right. I wanted to let you know that we use the technology here. We've helped many, many companies over the last 16 years, but we decided with all the mathematical models we've created, why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. But let me just show you what MV25 is about. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. And I'd start taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to old cards in my hand, very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it and even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified, it's made in the US. If you go to bashiva.com right on the shop, You'll click there, or you can go right to mb25.life, either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. If you buy six bottles, you get six bottles for free. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement. And it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. Now, let's talk about what is actually in turmeric. Well, there are minerals, there are vitamins, there are essential oils, there are terpenes, and there are flavonoids. So five different types of compounds. So what are the nutrients in turmeric? They're really 44 key molecules. So first of all, there are these 16 minerals, calcium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, zinc, iron, copper, aluminum, arsenic, chromium, cobalt, lead, magnesium, manganese, mercury, and nickel. Turmeric also has these vitamins, 13 vitamin A, the whole range of B vitamins, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, and B12. A lot of vitamin A. And it also has vitamin C, D, E, and vitamin K. And then turmeric also has essential oil composition, the alpha pinene, the limonene, the turmeron, and the beta turmeron. And then it's got terpene. 
proteins. So curcumin, beta curcumin, alpha curcumin, and foran. And then it also has these flavonoids acids. Epicatechin, it's got rutin, genistein, quercetin, myrcetin, camphorol, and apigenin. There's also seven phytochemicals, the quercetin, the camphorol, the alpha tumorone, the beta tumorone, the limonene, and the curcumin. So what are the biological effects? The eight biological effects, it's an antioxidant, right? Which means it's quote unquote anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, anti-carcinogenic, anti-cancer, anti-mutagenic, anti-proliferative, cardioprotective, hepatoprotective, and neuroprotective. Neuro means your mind, hepato means your liver, cardio means your heart, and anti-proliferative means, and anti-mutagenic means it stops mutations from taking place and the proliferation of cancer cells. Turmeric has very important health benefits, skin health, brain health, joint health, liver health, cardiovascular health, digestive health, wound care, immune health, reproductive health, and respiratory health. So if we look at the molecular systems level, what do we find? It turns out there are five different molecular pathways that are involved when you get lung congestion. First is arachidonic acid metabolism. Another is your body has cytokines and the production through the MAPK pathway. And then you have cytokine production via NF kappa beta. That, and then you have the mucin production pathway. So these four pathways are involved in exacerbating lung congestion. If you can have smooth muscle relaxation, you can breathe. So net of it is PGE2, prostaglandin 2, IL-1 and IL-8. You also have IL-6 and IL-8. Mucin-5, we want to lower these guys, but there is a chemical that we want to increase called MLCP. MLCP promotes smooth muscle relaxation, and that's important so you can breathe. You want to take a multi-dimensional, multi-systems approach. So that's what we're doing here. So that's what I mean by system science, all right? And by the way, you may find products, pharmaceutical products or herbal products that say, oh, we lower mucus, but they're not doing other stuff. You say, you got to hit all of these things to take a systems approach. So let's go down to the health aspects. Now there are three molecular systems that turmeric affects that it's good for. And this is from the known science. It helps break up mucus. It has an anti-asthma production and it has an anti-fibrosis effect to help stop that. So now let's look at it from the molecular level. So these are the seven compounds that from the known science, it could change that we know work. So limonene, why does it have an anti-asthma effect from turmeric? It blocks this activation through the A2A receptor and it also inhibits these interglobulins and the cytokine IL-5. The other thing is curcumin, literally blocks TNF-alpha. Now TNF-alpha induces the hyper-responsiveness and the upright regulation of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. And that activates eosinophil activation, which leads to asthma. So not only do you get the anti-asthma effect from limonene, but also from curcumin. And then you have the anti-mucus effects. So the quercetin blocks the upregulation of PKC. PKC is driving EGFR, which is driving ERK, which is driving this gene. And this gene hypersecretes mucus in the airway. And what quercetin does, it blocks PKC right up there. So that's how you're able to reduce the mucus. So now let me wrap up. How much should you take? So again, big disclaimer, go talk to your doctor. This is not a medical program. We have to say that. So when you aggregate the science, what do you get? We find that for lung congestion, really stopping breathing, Abity et al. This paper just came out in 2022, it's hot off the press, at 500 milligrams per day. Balcaro et al. in 2014 and has found about 500 milligrams of curcumin twice a day. And I'm not going to pro pronounce the next guy's name. It starts with a KUP. 2014, again, 500 curcumin curcumin four times a day. And then curcumin dose for cardiovascular health, heart health is around 70 to 2000 milligrams per day. Now, if you incorporate curcumin into your diet, which is turmeric, um, you can get it on a long-term basis. You can obviously get the pills and there's various formulations that are out there that you can look into. And then finally, should you use organic or conventional? Well, I'm a big proponent of organic. In this case, it's preferred because a lot of the conventional farming uses pesticides that are linked to lung, liver, kidney, thyroid toxicity, and are carcinogenic. Now, organic farming produces healthier plants free of those pesticides. So there you go. And anyway, to all of you, this has been the turmeric and lung congestion discussion as a part of the lung health series and is brought to you by Truth, Freedom and Health and by the Cytosol Open Science Project. So join the movement for Truth, Freedom and Health and support yourself ultimately so you can become a enlightened human being. Be well and be the light. Thank you.